Today we're gonna learn how beast Captain America is. Puns. Welcome to Comic Misconceptions, the show that takes you into detail about the things you think you know about comics. I'm your host, Scott Nicewander, and I'm not taking this off. Because I love it. Alright. As much as I love this thing, I guess it's gotta come off for the episode. So, like I said, if you couldn't hear any of that, welcome to Comic Misconceptions, I'm Scott, and today we're gonna continue our month of Halloween-themed episodes by talking a little bit about Captain America. How does he fit into all of this? Well, the answer lies in last week's trivia question, which was, what classic horror monster did Captain America once turn into? Many of you guys got the answer right, including Joe Gillespie, who says, Cap Wolf, exclamation mark. It's that kind of enthusiasm that we love. And if that answer isn't clear enough, Captain America turned into a werewolf. So the story goes that Captain America was on the hunt for his old pilot, John Jameson, who is J. Jonah Jameson's son, and has had some run-ins with lycanthropy in the past as Man-Wolf. So when Cap hears a story on the news that says a man was murdered by a half-man, half-wolf-like creature, he fears that John may be behind it. Especially since the moon gem that turned John Jameson into Man-Wolf is now mysteriously missing. Cap enlists the help of Dr. Druid as he thinks this may be the work of Supernatural at play. I do not watch the show Supernatural. If I did, I'd probably make some sort of joke here but we move on. Little do Cap and Druid know that Wolverine is actually working the same case, but he was captured pretty quickly. It's revealed that two characters, Nightshade and Dreadman, are using a combination of a serum that turns people into werewolves mixed with Dreadman's hypnosis that basically allows him to control them. They try to give the serum to Wolverine, but because of his healing factor, it just doesn't work. So they hypnotize him since he's already feral enough for their purposes, which honestly, I'm not entirely certain what their purpose is. I mean, Dreadman stole the moon gem because it possessed this unknown arcane potential and him being a sorcerer type person, I guess that attracted him to it. But then later it looks like he knows exactly how to use it just by performing what can only be described as generic supervillain science. I mean look, he's even got a brain in a jar right there. That's how we know stuff's going down. But I'm getting ahead of myself here, let's go back to the story. Cap and Druid go investigate this town full of werewolf people when the hypnotized Wolverine attacks them. Now Druid just kinda slips out of the picture here, disappears, leaving Cap to deal with Wolverine all by himself. And then we have Moon Hunter, who is Dreadman's like right hand man. He just goes and incapacitates Cap. Where you at Druid? Why aren't you helping? As he's out cold, Nightshade injects into Cap what I'm going to be calling werewolf juice, because I want to. And Captain America turns into the ferocious Cap Wolf. Meanwhile, Druid and Dreadman are literally having a staring contest for an entire issue. Druid is defeated and Dreadman takes him captive to, I don't know, give him a nice haircut. It looks like. Cap Wolf is thrown into a pit of other werewolves where he shows his dominance by beating up the leader of this group, this white werewolf. That is several times referred to as Whitey. So there's that. Also, I should point out that at no time do they hypnotize Captain America like they did Wolverine. So now we have this super soldier who's awesome to begin with. You give him werewolf juice, and now he's a free thinking, even stronger version of Captain America. He even surrendered himself freely to the bad guys, where they could have easily hypnotized him into being under their control. But nope, didn't want to do that. And the pit of werewolves that Cap is thrown into, they don't appear to be hypnotized or under Dreadman's control at all, because after Cap learns how to speak in his werewolf form, which is just singing really high, seriously, that's how werewolves talk, but anyway, he rallies the wolf pit together, they form a cheerleading squad, getting into the pyramid formation, Cap climbs to the top, breaks him out, because Cap, Cap, he's our man, if he can't do it, there are hundreds of other superheroes that occupy the same area, so the odds are pretty good that someone else will help. This very much reminds me of Rise of the Planet of the Apes where Captain America would be like Caesar and he's trying to get all of the other werewolves to unite together and break out of their cells and of course Wolverine would be the gorilla because he's in his own separate cell and he's always angry all the time. But they escape and they subdue both Moon Hunter and Nightshade by maybe an unintentional joke of dogpiling. They abandon their newly defeated foes when Cap learns the whereabouts of Druid and how Dreadman is planning on slitting his throat since a supervillain sign said that spilling the blood of an enemy with magical properties and pressing it to his throat will activate the Moon Gem's full power, turning him into Star Wolf. A different Star Wolf. This Star Wolf. 
one that kind of looks like Alien X from Ben 10, if he was injected with werewolf juice. So Druid had his throat cut, Cap and his wolf pack are fighting Star Wolf and his wolf pack in yet another dog pile, Moon Hunter climbs out of a pit that I guess Cap left him in, and he lets out Wolverine as he's still under Dreadman's control. Whitey brings Druid's body back to the lab and injects Nightshade with her own werewolf juice to motivate her to create a cure. Then, Cable shows up to deliver the best line in the entire arc. That's a lot of crazy stuff that's happening but it doesn't slow down much. Druid snaps back to life and cures Wolverine out of the mind control, and it turns out that Moon Hunter was also being controlled as he aids in defeating Star Wolf. Captain America rips the moon gem out of Star Wolf's throat. Cable crushes it under his heel like that scene from Passion of the Christ, and both Cable and Wolverine just go away. The end. But we're still stuck with a super soldier suffering from selenophobia, say that five times fast. Luckily, Nightshade finds a cure to the werewolf juice. She uses that cure on good old Whitey, who turns out to be John Jameson. Remember him? The reason this whole arc took place? We also find out that Druid survived getting his throat cut by sealing the wound with sheer force of will. Sure thing, buddy. Suddenly a Captain America doppelganger pops out of nowhere to kill Captain America. For no real reason. They fight, Cap kills them, the whole thing lasts maybe two pages, but I guess I just needed something to fill that two pages. During the fight, Captain America gets injected with the antidote of the werewolf juice, turning him back into regular Captain America. Then my favorite part, Nightshade is arrested. Why is that interesting to me? Well, let's break it down here. So we have Moon Hunter, the right-hand man to Dreadmond, who claimed that he was being hypnotized to do his dirty work. And we really don't have any proof of that other than just his word. So all of the things that he's done, which are arguably much worse than the things that Nightshade has done, he's just gonna get away with because, you know, we just, we're just gonna believe him. Meanwhile, Nightshade says the same thing, that she was just under the control of Dreadmond, but Cap's not having any of that, so she's gonna go get arrested and answer for her crimes in court. So she goes to jail while Moon Hunter literally rides off into the sunset with Captain America. What? Amazing. And that's the story of how Captain America turned into a werewolf. Yet another example of an enjoyable story that doesn't necessarily make a whole lot of sense. What do you guys think? If you could infuse a superhero and a mythical beast to create the coolest combination, what would it be? Let me know in the comments. But now it's time for me to shove more words in your face in the form of the weekly trivia challenge. So next week is our 15th episode of Comic Misconceptions, and I want to change things up a little bit. So, starting from next week onward, every fifth episode will be a top five episode. Starting with my top five scariest comic book characters. Why are we doing this? Well, way back in the day, before Comic Misconceptions had its first episode, I was compiling a list of things that I wanted to do videos about. And that list... I still have it and I still pull from episodes, but I do notice that I have lists within that list. A lot of them are collections of characters and stories that fit around a central theme like corporate superheroes or celebrity team-ups. So I thought about combining all of these into a top five list that we can do from time to time. So what does this mean for the trivia challenge? I don't really know. I, we're gonna experiment a little bit. So I don't really have a lot of trivia that's going into the next week's episode. Uh, it's just a personal list of who I think are the scariest characters in comic books. So uh, here's just a little bit of trivia about my number five pick. So this week's trivia challenge is what creepy character's name roughly translates to crown in German. If you know the answer or want to leave your best educated guess, you can do so in the comments below. If you are right, you can be featured on the show next week. So get started on the weekly trivia challenge. Thanks for watching this episode of Comic Misconceptions. If you enjoyed what you saw, please feel free to subscribe. We have new episodes of this show every Wednesday. We also have some other great shows, The Nerds Play and Behind the Frame for more awesome nerdy things that you can enjoy with your eyeballs. You can also like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter at Scott Nicewander. We'll see you guys the next week when we talk about more things that you thought you knew about comics. See ya. Gotta adjust my tie. Gotta look good. That's why I'm covering my face. He rallies the wolf pit together, get it up. So Cap can get it there. Get it. Get at the top of that pyramid. Turn people into wolverines. Nope, that's not right. I'm a wolverine.
My hatred keeps me warm.